So, you want to be an F1 fan? Well, you're in good hands. First thing you need to do is decide what kind of fan you want to be. You can stan a driver, absolutely loathe the driver, or be a neutral. If you decide to go with the first option, some popular drivers include Lando Norris, Charles Leclerc, Pierre Gasly, or George Russell. If you decide to go with the second option, popular options include Esteban Ocon, Lewis Hamilton, Fernando Alonso, or Nikita Mazepin. But, to be honest, you can make a case for hating or loving pretty much every driver for some reason or another. If you're a neutral, you might want to choose a team to support. If you're a massive Chad, then choose Aston Martin or McLaren, if you're weird, choose Alpine, and if you're a glory hunter, then choose Mercedes or Red Bull. Once you've established what kind of fan you are, then you need to watch some races. Obviously. Now, it goes without saying that being an F1 fan means you watch the races, which generally means remortgaging your house to pay for F1 TV Pro. While you may think that this is the end of the crippling expense, don't forget you'll need merch to be a true fan. For that, you're looking at upwards of £50 for just a normal t-shirt, and if you want a hoodie to complete the look, then add another £80. Oh, you thought that was it? No. You'll find yourself wanting to go to some races, and for that you need to spend even more of the money you don't have. If you want to slum it with general admission, then you're looking at around 150 to 200 pounds for a Sunday ticket, but if you want to ensure you have somewhere to sit, then make that 350. Now you've spent your entire life savings on merch and race tickets, you're probably feeling a little angry. But that's okay, there's a website for people like you to go and vent your anger. It's called Twitter. To use Twitter, you'll need an account, and for this, you want a username that reflects your favourite driver or team. Here's one I made earlier as a demonstration. When you have all that done, you can truly begin your journey as an F1 fan. Through Twitter, pretty much everyone you speak to will try to force their opinions on you, so it's your job to force yours back. This is generally how arguments start, and if there's anything I've learned from Twitter, it's that everyone likes a good argument. Eventually, after getting into enough arguments, you'll attract a follower base who shares your opinion. These are often referred to by Twitter users as moots for some reason. Once you have a few followers, you can start getting into more arguments, safe in the knowledge that your thousands of followers will join you in ripping into whoever it is this time. Once you're satisfied you've won enough arguments, you can then move on, safe in the knowledge that you've left the community a worse place than when you joined it. At this point, you can officially consider yourself an F1 superfan, meaning you can retire from your career as a professional knobhead and join F1 TikTok or something, I don't know. If you're not clinically insane, however, then you might want an alternative platform to TikTok, which is where YouTube comes in. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, YouTube is the hardest place to be an F1 fan. You spend hours making videos, thumbnails, and channel branding only for someone to dig through your old tweets and discover you're a massive racist. Or a nonce. Obviously, if you're not one of those two things, then making F1 YouTube videos is actually quite fun, and I'd highly recommend it to anyone who's this far into their career as an F1 fan. Anyway, I digress. After you've done all this, you may well find yourself wanting to be an F1 driver, racing alongside the people you consider as idols. Well, I'm sorry you had to find out this way, but racing is expensive as fuck. So, if you're not a millionaire, then forget it. The closest you'll ever get to being in an F1 car is by playing the F1 game, which, you won't be surprised to learn, is expensive. You won't want to be playing on a controller if you can help it, so you'll need to invest invest in a steering wheel. This can cost you anything between £100 for a really basic one and £10,000 for something that's not actually that much better. Factor in £50 for the game and £500 for a next-gen console and you're staring bankruptcy right in the eyes. And so you go on, wasting more and more money, losing more and more friends and generally becoming a worse human being. Which is all part of the fun.